Hi, welcome to the world of machine learning. Over the course of next few weeks, we will start to unravel the concepts and the various dimensions of machine learning. Learning begins with the disaster. Let's look at a case study of Titanic. Titanic was a cruise line that set sail from Europe to US. On its maiden voyage, it hit an iceberg and killed almost 1,502 out of 2,224 passengers and crew. Although there was some element of luck involved in surviving, some groups of people were more likely to survive than others, such as women, children and upper class. Let's take this as a case study and apply machine learning to solve the problem of survivors. Before we go any further, let's define machine learning. Machine learning as defined by Arthur Samuel, the field of study that gives computers the ability to learn without being explicitly programmed. Now, as you can see, I've underlined the words without being explicitly programmed. Let's hold on to that thought for a second and we'll revisit this definition very soon. You must be wondering the relationship between Titanic and machine learning. Before you start to code in any new language, the first thing that you write is hello world. And hello world is a simple application where you probably print hello world. And that is your first step into learning a new programming language. So machine learning is no different. Titanic is an example of an hello world application for machine learning. What you see here is the data pertaining to Titanic. It lists all the passengers who survived and who did not survive the Titanic crash. You could get a copy of this data by registering in www.kaggle.com using Gmail ID. A Kaggle is a place for all the data science challenges and Titanic was one of the challenges in the Kaggle environment. When you click on the data, you could see that there are two files, the train file and the test file, which you need to download to your local environment. The train.csv lists all the passengers who travel by Titanic. It also shares the attributes of those passengers. For example, let's start with passenger ID. It's a running number which uniquely identifies every passenger. Survived is an attribute that reflects whether the passenger survived or did not survive. P class describes the passenger class, whether the passenger traveled by class 1, class 2 or class 3. It also reflects the gender of the passenger, whether the passenger was a male or a female. It reflects the age of the passenger. SIBSP reflects the number of siblings or spouses who traveled along with the passenger. PARC is an attribute that describes the number of parent or children who traveled along with the passenger. Ticket provides you the information as a PNR number, a ticket ID, which the passenger used for traveling the Titanic. Fare reflects the cost or the payment that the passenger made to travel on the Titanic ship. Cabin provides the location where the passenger stayed in the Titanic. And embarked is an attribute that describes where did the passenger embark the Titanic. So there are three ports from which passengers embarked. One was Southampton, one was Cherbourg and the other was Queenstown. In the context of Titanic, there are two files that have been provided. One is called the train file, the other is called the test file. The train file, as we see here, shows the list of all the passengers along with their attributes, along with the survival status of that particular passenger. Whereas the test file that you can see here provides only the list of passengers along with their attributes and does not reflect the survival status of that particular passenger. The objective here is to build a pattern based on the train file which reflects the survival status of the passenger and then apply the pattern on the test file to decode 
the survival status of those passengers who have been listed in the test file as well. The following gives you a pictorial view of the steps. The step one is to learn on the train data through which we are going to develop patterns. The next step is going to apply the pattern on the test data to predict the survival status of those particular passages. This type of problem is called a classification problem in the context of machine learning. Further, it comes under the context of something called supervised learning. Here we are predicting or we are looking to predict whether the passenger survived or not survived, which is nothing but a binary classification problem. Essentially, our output is going to be anywhere between 0 and 1. Here, survived is called a dependent attribute or a label. In essence, this is called a labeled data set. Because we are going to learn from the label, develop a pattern, and then apply the pattern on a test data set which does not have a label to reflect the survival status of those passengers. The other data points called the P class or the name or the gender or the age are called features or they are even called the independent variables. Let's go ahead and explore data. Let's do a pivot table. And let's choose gender as one of the data points. And let's find out the number of passengers who travel the Titanic by gender. And as you can see, the default is given as sum. Let's make it as count. And as you can see here, that there are 891 passengers in the Titanic, of which 314 were female and 577 were male. Now let's add survival into the mix. Now, as you can see here, out of 314 female passengers, 233 survived, whereas out of 577 passengers, only 109 passengers survived. So, let's find out the probability of a randomly picked passenger surviving if the passenger is a male. As you can see here, the if a passenger is randomly picked and the passenger turns out to be male, then the probability of survival is just 0.18 or 0.19. Let's calculate the probability of the passenger being female And as you can see here, if a passenger is randomly picked and the passenger turns out to be female, the probability of that particular passenger survival is 0.74. So we have decoded our first pattern. The pattern is if the passenger, a randomly picked passenger is female, the probability of survival is 0.74. And if a randomly picked passenger is a male, the probability of survival is 0.19. Now let's go and apply this pattern on the test data set. And what we could do here is for every male passenger, we could mark survived as zero, which reflects the passenger is dead. And for every passenger who is female, we could mark survived as one, which reflects that the passenger did survive. So in this case, our result will be if we have to do a pivot and check the number of male versus the female passengers, let's drag and drop gender and let's drag and drop passenger ID and let's correct the summation to count. So in this case, we are going to essentially mark 152 passengers as survived, whereas 266 passengers as not survived. And then once we compile that particular result set, we could go ahead and submit our 
vessel set that we have found through intuition and see how we have fared in predicting the actual status of that particular passenger. We could come up with other patterns as well. So instead of using gender, let's use passenger class and see what result do we get. And we'll remove gender for now. And then we would clear the cells. And let's clear the bank values as well. Now, as we can see here, the number of passengers who traveled by passenger class 1 is 216, out of which 136 passengers survived. So let's come out with some kind of a probability and then we would find that if a passenger, a randomly picked passenger, traveled by P class 1, which is passenger class 1, the probability of survival is 0.62 which is a high probability. Let's find out what is the probability of a passenger traveling by P class 2. And let's look at 87 divided by 184, which reflects 0.47. And finally, passenger class 3, we could see here, that of out of 491 passengers in the training data set, only 119 survived, which reflects a very small number. So from this analysis, we could go and mark those passengers who traveled by class 1 as survived. So as you can see that we can come up with multiple patterns. And we could come up with multiple combination of those patterns as well. In this Hello World exercise, we have a limited data set size, which is about 891 rows. And we have a limited set of features, which is 10 features in this particular scenario. Hence, we have the luxury to go and do a lot more exploratory analysis and find out patterns. Now, let's go back to the original definition of machine learning uh, as defined by Arthur Samuel, the field of study that gives computers the ability to learn without being explicitly programmed. Now as and when I am finding patterns, I am going to code a program which is similar to an if then else statement which is going to say hey, if the passenger's attributes meet this criteria, then the passenger did survive. So that is going to be a series of if then else statements, which is going to compare the attributes of the uh, attributes of the passenger to the pattern that we have found out. For example, we could have a, a set of lines which says, if the gender is male, mark the passenger is not survived. Else, if the gender is female, mark the passenger as survived. We could go a step further. We could also mark any passenger who traveled by P class 1 as survived. So in this case, the, the second condition will override the first condition. Because for we know that passengers who travel by P class 1 had a higher probability of survival. Now, let's assume that we are going to stack up all these if then else statements. And that becomes a program. Now, going back to the definition. It's seemingly impossible for us to create such patterns stacked up in if then else statements to solve a particular problem. What if there is a new attribute? What if the data changes? Then how does the program deal with it? We need to go and revisit the program again. So we need a better way to handle this learning process. It cannot be a manual intervention. So it has to be a machine learning based methodology that we need to implement here.